curse of blood stretches far and wide. Whoever wrote my life. Mega kill! What up, humans? Karumi here, and welcome to the Mobile Legends Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to talk about the support hero, Carmilla. Carmilla has a good set of crowd control, area of effect, and buff skills. Our Shadow of Twilight, Carmilla, is a support hero. I consider Carmilla as a ganking hero, since her skills are mostly to crowd control enemies. Not only that, her ultimate skill link multiple enemies to seal their fate all together. Now, let me share some tips and tricks on how to use Carmilla based on my experience. We will also teach you some combos and techniques on the latter part of this bootcamp. But before that, let me explain our skills one by one for further understanding. Carmilla's passive, Vampire Pact, lets Carmilla steal physical and magic defense from enemies. Upon dealing damage to enemy heroes, Carmilla will steal their physical and magic defense. Each target can have their defense stolen only once in a short period. The stolen physical and magic defense can be stacked up to 5 times. This effect lasts for a few seconds. Carmilla's first skill, Crimson Flower. Let's Carmilla summon two Crimson Flowers around her. Upon clicking this skill, Carmilla will have her movement speed increased. Along with that, she summons two Crimson Flowers to circle around her for a few seconds. Enemies hit by the Crimson Flowers will receive a certain amount of magic damage and will have their movement speed reduced. Meanwhile, the spinning speed of the flowers will be increased while hitting enemies. Not only that, each time the Crimson Flowers deal damage to enemies, she will restore a certain amount of health points. If the target is a minion, this skill will restore less health points. Carmilla's second skill, Bloodbath. Let's Carmilla accumulate Bloodbath energy to increase her movement speed. Upon clicking this skill, Carmilla will have her movement speed boosted. The movement speed boost decays over time. Carmilla can use again this skill. Casting this skill again will cast the Bloodbath energy to a designated enemy. The target will receive magic damage and will be stunned. The damage and the stunning duration scales with the Bloodbath energy accumulated. The Bloodbath energy charging is defined by the flower indicator. When the Bloodbath energy is at its maximum, the flower will bloom as indicator. Like Carmilla's ultimate skill, Curse of Blood. Let's Carmilla cast Curse of Blood for the designated direction. Upon hitting an enemy hero, the curse will spread out from the initial target to nearby enemy heroes. The spread will deal a certain amount of magic damage and will slow them down by a massive percentage. The slow effect decays rapidly over time. The curse can be inflicted to up to three targets at the same time. If an enemy with the curse receives damage or crowd control, the other influenced targets will also receive damage and crowd control effects. The damage and crowd control duration the others will receive will be lowered. There are so many items that you can buy for Carmilla. You can focus on items that grants magic lifesteal, further slowing effects, and items that increases health regeneration effects. The Kurumi Way build can help you survive team fights by improving your health regeneration and focusing more on magical lifesteal. You can also consider the Tanker build if you prefer to be more durable and less of a damager. Considering the Mager Danger build can help you to burst more in team fights. But let's talk about the Kurumi Way further. If you prefer more into roaming, then you can consider buying Courage Mask first. This item grants health points and cooldown reduction. One of its unique attributes grants additional movement speed. One of its unique active skill, Encourage, lets you and allies near you to be boosted with additional movement speed. This lasts for a few seconds. 
This will also increase yours and your allies' physical and magic attack. This unique active skill has a really long cooldown. Another unique passive of this skill is Bravery. This increases your physical and magic attack, physical and magic defense, and your health points and mana regeneration for all nearby allies. Another unique passive of this item is Devotion. This grants you additional gold and experience every 4 seconds. But the catch is, you won't gain gold or experience when killing minions or monsters if a teammate is near you for the first 6 minutes of the game. Another unique passive of this item is Thriving. This lets you gain extra experience and gold with every assist you make. When you are ranked 5th on the gold rank of your team, the gold granted by Devotion is modified and you will now receive 20 gold every 4 seconds. Same goes with the experience granted every 4 seconds. You will be granted 35 experience per 4 seconds when you are the 5th rank in the experience or level department. This is a really good item to help you and your allies chase enemies or escape death. For your kicks, you can consider buying Demon Shoes. Demon Shoes grants mana regeneration and movement speed. Its unique passive regenerates your mana upon eliminating minions. It also regenerates your mana upon killing an enemy hero or assisting an ally. You can consider buying Ice Queen Wand. This item gives additional magic power, magical life steal, mana, and movement speed. Its unique passive lets you slow down an enemy when your skill hits them. The slowing effect lasts for a few seconds and stacks up to two times. You might want to consider Oracle. This grants health points, magical defense, and cooldown reduction. Its unique passive increases shield absorption and HP regeneration effects. This can significantly boost the regeneration effects you receive from your first skill. You might also want to consider concentrated energy. It provides additional health points, magic power, and magical life steal. Magical life steal can greatly increase your survivability, since this also lets you life steal with your magical skills. Killing enemy heroes will also regenerate you some health. Lastly, you can consider Blood Wings. This grants you magic power and health points. Its unique passive adds health points. For every points of magic power added to your hero, the additional health points can help you survive in team fights. The item build for Carmilla really depends on the enemy's lineup. So make sure to read each item's description so you can adapt in-game. One of the best spells to be used on Carmilla is Revitalize. This spell summons a healing spring. When you or your allies are in this healing spring, you will restore health every half second, depending on a percentage of your maximum health. It also enhances the shield and HP region effect you receive. This healing spring lasts for a few seconds. You can also use Sprint. This will increase your movement speed which can help you to chase enemies or escape death. In my opinion, the best emblem set to be used is the Custom Support Emblem set. Custom Support Emblem could provide extra stats according to your needs as a sustaining support. Set Agility to its max level because it can give you additional movement speed. Higher movement speed means higher chance to chase enemies or escape death. Setting Gift to max level will provide additional healing effect to your first skill. Higher healing effect means higher health regenerated to you for more sustainability. That means. You can survive the team fights with a higher probability. Get Focusing Mark to increase the damage dealt of your allies to your target after dealing damage to that enemy. This is really one of the best options since when you use your ultimate skill, your allies can increase their damage dealt to that target, making him erased from existence in no time. This effect has a short cooldown. Set first skill to max level first. Prioritizing this makes the damage and the health regenerated higher. That means, you can sustain further in team fights. Prioritize second skill less since your first skill is what you need to last longer in team fights. Always upgrade his ultimate skill when available for upgrading. Carmilla's passive skill is what you need to receive less damage. With the ability to steal the physical and magic defense of your enemies, this will definitely make you stronger while making them weaker. This passive skill lets you focus more on support and mage items, since this skill will already make you durable somehow. Don't forget the indicator above her head that indicates how many stacks you have. It can stack up to 5 times, so having a full red bat wing means you have 5 stacks. Your first skill can easily let you achieve full stacks. 
Carmilla's first skill is what you need to sustain in team fights. With the ability to regenerate your health while hitting the enemies. Being inside the team fight will definitely heal you more. Just imagine that you are inside the team fight and all of them are hit with your crimson flowers. That's a massive series of health regeneration. The only thing about this skill is you need to be beside them. It's so fun watching someone in agony beside you. Send them stickers right after they kiss the ground for a good job of making you happy. Although minions regenerate health for you less. It's still advisable to regenerate your health in a minion wave. Also, jungle monsters, turtle, and lord regenerate full percentage to you. So better utilize this to let you achieve nirvana. Carmilla's second skill is what you need to chase enemies or escape death. With the movement speed buff, this works like you are on sprint spell. Just imagine when you are dying and you need to escape fast. The skill will not only boost your speed, but it can also stun the enemy chasing you. Stunning the enemy will let you escape in peace. Again, take note that the charging of bloodbath energy is indicated by the flower below. Once the flower blooms, then that's why you know that it has reached maximum bloodbath energy. The more bloodbath energy, the more the damage and the stun duration. Just make sure that you use this skill again if you think you have charged it enough. You don't wanna be like us that it used the skill again too soon, which made an enemy run away alive. <laughs> Carmilla's ultimate skill is what you need to amplify your team's damage during team fights. With the ability to cursor link up to three enemies in terms of damage and crowd control. The cursed enemies will definitely feel the wrath of your team's damage. Just imagine that three of the enemies are cursed. Just hitting one of them will hurt the other two. Or even crowd control one and the two will experience the same. If the cursed enemy move away from the other cursed heroes for a certain distance, the link will be broken. So if you are against Carmilla, you better move away from other cursed heroes so the link will break. You can also use this skill to massively reduce the enemy's movement speed. The negative thing about her ultimate skill is it can miss the target. It's not a homing skill. So make sure to aim properly. We did some little experiments with this skill. Let's focus first on our little experiments without our lab rats. You might be wondering, what if you or your ally deal true damage to a cursed enemy? Will the other Pierce 2 receive true damage as well? Well, let's try it. I bought Calamity Reaper so I could deal true damage to the target. Okay, let's use my ultimate and let's deal the true damage to one of them. As you can see, the true damage was also received by the other two cursed enemies. So basically, the damage type for the other cursed heroes will depend on the type of attack dealt initially. Just imagine if heroes that could deal burst true damage like Carrie will be attacking a cursed target. Enemies would just definitely wish they weren't born. How about extra additional damage like Demon Hunter's Sword and Feather of Heaven? As you can see, the additional damage are also dealt. This effect is really perfect especially if you are in combo with Padang that has Demon Hunter Sword. Or Claude's ultimate skill with a Demon Hunter Sword plus a Golden Staff item. Now, as you might be also asking, are the damage received by the other two pierced heroes will spell Vamp Region to Carmilla. Let's try using our first skill on one of the cursed heroes. As you can see, the regeneration from the first skill and from the concentrated energy item are shown separately. As the cursed heroes receive link damage. It also gives Carmilla some magical life steal from the link damage. Therefore, having items with magic life steal of spell vamp will definitely keep you alive. Even against multiple enemies. How about the damage coming from external source like turrets or allies? Because we have few human friends, we only have our friendly damage bots with us. Let's try to link them while the turret is attacking one of them. As you can see. Carmilla only got health from the initial damage of her ultimate skill. But for the linked damage done by the turret, it didn't grant us health. Now, let's have our guest lab rats first. Because Carmilla's ultimate skill is quite intricate to demonstrate. We need some aid from our guest lab rats. First, we tried if Kajal will be able to pull all targets affected by Carmilla's ultimate skill. As you can see, the other pierced hero was held by Kaja's ultimate skill, but was not pulled towards Kaja's direction. Meaning, the effect of the immobilization or stun is the one that only kicked in. Next, we tried it on Minotaur's ultimate skill. 
Take a look on how tremendous the damage of his ultimate has become. The knockup count might still be the same, but the damage is definitely something you should worry about. Next, we now have Hanabi. We all know that Hanabi's first skill bounces its damage towards nearby enemies. Take a look on how massive her damage becomes with Carmilla's ultimate skill. As you can see, even if Rakuten is only level 6 and has not farmed well yet, the damage output Rakuten deals is extraordinary. Next, we have Franco. We tried if Franco's hook will also pull the other cursed enemies. As you can see, the initial target was the only one pulled but the other two experienced a stun effect. Now, how about Franco's ultimate skill? Will it grip on just the main target or to every cursed hero? As you can see, all cursed heroes are being held by Franco. So in short, with Carmilla's ultimate skill, it's like you are making Franco's ultimate skill an area of effect. Amazing, right? Lastly, we have Kufra. We tried if the other cursed targets will also experience knockup from Kufra's first skill. As you can see, the other two cursed enemies were also knocked up. Therefore, Carmilla's ultimate is best when your teammates has either burst damage, or area of effect crowd control skills. In terms of her combo, we usually follow a simple combo for Carmilla. First, we use our second skill to dive in quickly and to start charging for bloodbath energy. It's up to you when you should release the second skill again. It will depend on the situation if there is an instant need to stun a target. Then, we either use our first or ultimate skill depending on the situation. But on this situation, we used ultimate skill first since our teammates needs it at this moment. Then, we use our first skill while being beside the enemy. This way, you can regenerate health while hurting them. It will be a love and hate relationship from now on. Then, deal basic attacks and use skills as soon as they are available. You can use your spells whenever you think it is suitable. Here is another combo we follow when trying to gank an enemy hero alone. First, we use our second skill to boost our movement speed towards him. Then, we use our first skill to deal damage while being beside the enemy. Then, we use our second skill again to stun the enemy. It's up to you if you are going to use your second skill as soon as possible, or wait for it to charge longer. Then, we use our ultimate skill to further slow down the target. Then, just slap the hell out of the enemy. Use your skills whenever available. You have slain an enemy. Additional tip. Always remember your role. If you are choosing to be a full support ganker, then don't be overconfident diving in team fights alone. I know that Carmilla is a hero with high sustainability, but being overconfident could reverse your situation. So it's better to have some backup to make sure you both can get the most out of your ultimate skill. You don't want to be like Roddick who is so foolish on diving in recklessly. The tips I mentioned are just some of the ways you can use Carmilla. This video just guides you on how to use Carmilla the Kurumi way. We would like to thank our guest lab rats this boot camp. Because this is the 69th boot camp. We made sure that not just one, not two, but lots of lab rats had fun on this boot camp. You can search for them in game or on their social media accounts and follow their adventures in the land of dawn and in reality. So, once again, this is Kurumi and that's how you use Carmilla. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to like and share this video. Also subscribe to our channel for more contents by clicking on the subscribe button below. For our skin giveaway events, visit the community tab for giveaway event posts. We have our coffee account just in case you want to donate us some coffee funds. 
Check our coffee link on the description of this video. Please, only trust boot camp videos from our official accounts. See you on the next Mobile Legends boot camp. Cheers. Victory!